There are so many cool and creative ways in which you can spice up your websites. And with dynamic content for Elementor and its advanced masks option, well, you can add a little sprinkle of cool to your images as well. And in this video, I'll show you how you can not only add CSS clip paths to your images, but also how to apply PNG or SVG masks, as well as how to create your own using Affinity Photo. So if you're ready to add some sparkle to your web design, let's get started. So let's kick things off by taking a look at a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. First of all, let's scroll down the page and you can see we've got this arrow facing over to the left hand side with the car placed inside it so everything is masked out nice and tidy. So that's quite a cool effect. And if we scroll a bit further, you can see we've got this. It's even though it's cut off a little bit because the image shape, it's giving us this kind of cool blob effect with a photograph. We've got gradients over it. It's pretty cool and using the right image or images, you can get some really nice effects. The best part is we're not reliant upon just using the options we have here. We can create our own and that's what I'm going to take you through today. Setting these things up, showing you how you can create your own and some of the options that are available. Now to do this, we're going to be using the plugin dynamic content for Elementor. Now, if you've seen this channel, you know that I've worked with these guys to create a series of video tutorials. This is nothing to do with that. This is not sponsored. This is just one of those little things that I think is another element to this particular plugin. And we've seen how you can use it with dynamic content, but I like the fact there's also a lot of creative uses for this particular plugin. So we're going to be using the advanced masking option. And inside there, there are a couple of options. Let me just quickly jump over and show you what we can do. So jumped over to the page, I've removed everything so you can see all we have is a simple two column layout with an image widget on the right hand side. Take a look on the left hand panel inside Elementor, you can see it's just a normal image. However, we have a new entry when you have this option installed as part of dynamic content for Elementor, that's the mask option. Inside there we've got three switches, none which is what you can currently see so there's no mask effect in the image whatsoever. We then have dynamic, we also have clip path. So let's start off with the clip path option and I'll come back to the dynamic in a moment. So clip path is basically CSS clipping paths are being applied to it. Now these are the kinds of things you don't have to rely upon a plugin like this. If you want to get stuck in and start creating these and applying CSS clip paths yourself, you could do that using Elementor. However, this just makes it super easy in a nice visual fashion. So what we have is we have a range of pre-designed clip paths. Just all we need to do is click on any of those and you can see it immediately applies to the image. So this is how we create these super simple arrows, these different shapes, different things you want to do just to add a little bit of visual effect to it. And these are pretty cool. They are quite useful. But what I think is where the real power comes in is when we take a look at the dynamic option. Open that up and you can see we currently have seven different predefined options available. Now these are a choice between like SVG masks and PNG and so on. Depending upon the server setup that you use, you may not be able to upload SVG images because some servers block these as potential security issues. So bear that in mind, you may be better off working with a PNG and I'll take you through how we can create a custom PNG using Affinity Photo in a little while. But let's take a look what we have. We have these different predefined masks and you can see we can click and we can activate them. Now it's worth noting that the image ratio will affect how this particular image mask works. So you can see with this blob because the image that we're using of the, the car is a landscape image therefore it's not as tall as it is wide, we're clipping off the top and bottom. So you'd be better off making sure you use the right image ratio whenever you want to use one of these predefined kind of masks. And you can go through and you can position things like you normally would with the mask and image and so on and so forth. So you can see if we want to, we can disable repeats. We can choose exactly where the effect is going to apply. You know, you can do all those kinds of things. You can adjust all that. You can adjust the size as well. So this kind of works in exactly the same way as you'd expect when you're working with an image. So we could say cover. You can just say contain. So you can see you get a smaller version of it. You can position it then wherever you want. So you can get some level of control over this. But obviously it's still worth making sure that you take into account the ratio of the image and the ratio of the mask to get the best effect. However, with only seven options there, it is kind of limiting. So it would be nice to be able to create our own custom options. And we can do exactly that. 
So let's take a look at how we'd go about creating one of these inside Affinity Photo. Now, while I'm using Affinity Photo, you could use pretty much any image editor that allows you to create any kind of mask. In other words, we can save as a PNG where we can have black or white with a transparent background and also using shades of gray. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about, but using Infinity Photo. So let's start off by creating a new document. So we're going to come up and we're going to say new. And from there, it doesn't really matter what we choose. Let's just do something, for example, say 800 by 800. We're working in pixels, obviously, because we're working for screen resolution. So we're going to say that's OK. I am going to make sure that I'm working with a transparent background and we'll say create. So there's our blank document ready to start working. OK, so let's just create our first mask. We're going to keep this really, really simple just to demonstrate the technique. First of all, I'm going to come over and I'm going to make sure that under my color section that I've got black as my foreground and making sure that when I create a shape, and we're going to use a vector shape for this example, that the fill is set to black and we're not going to use any stroke on this. Because basically what you're going to do is black will allow you to see the image. Anything outside that, the transparency area, white, whatever, will basically be ignored. Then if you use any shades, so in other words, transparency of black, then you can have a semi-opaque version. So let me just demonstrate that in a very simple way. Let's create a circle, a black circle. We'll just size this like so, and we'll position that in the center of the document. So now what we would see is if we save this out as a PNG with a transparent background, and making sure you set this as a 24-bit PNG, not an 8-bit dithered version, you'll see the image inside the circle and everything outside will be empty. You won't see anything there at all. So what we can do is we can duplicate this. Let's make this just a little bit smaller. I'm going to just shrink this up a little bit. And we're going to duplicate this by holding down the Alt key and dragging it. So we now have two solid black circles. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to select this top one and we're going to just adjust the opacity of it. So if we come to the Layers panel, you can see opacity for this layer is set to 100%. We'll click, we'll drop that down to 50%. So now we have two circles. One is 50% opaque, the other one is solid black. You can position these any way you want. It doesn't really matter too much as long as they are separate layers. So you can see we could drag and drop that underneath. It doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do now is going to come to File and we're going to say Export. From there, we're going to choose PNG. And under the preset, you can see it says PNG. We click, we don't want PNG 8-bit dithered. So leaving that as PNG. We'll export this. We're going to call this blob test and we'll say save. So we've finished with working inside Affinity Photo right now. So let's just jump back over into the dashboard of WordPress and take a look how we add this in. We're back into our page. We're back into the select image option and there's our seven predefined options. The last one is custom mask. We're going to click on that and then we can just choose our PNG file. So we're going to click to upload this image. So we're going to drag and drop our blob test inside there and we'll say insert media. And now you can see where we had that solid black, the car is showing through in 100% opacity, where we had that 50% transparency around the outside edge and offset the circle, you can see we have that semi-opaque, that semi-transparent effect there. So you could get really creative using these different techniques to create any kind of layer that you want, any kind of mask you want, just ensuring that you stick to black or a transparency of black, anything from 0, 1 to 100% for solid black. This way, like I say, you can create anything you want. You're not limited to working with vector graphics. You could use brushes. You could use anything you want as long as you stick to that basic principle. This is where SVG images would come in better over PNG because obviously PNG files can be bigger because you're dealing with transparency, because you're dealing with bitmap graphics. So they are inherently larger file sizes. If you were working with an SVG, because it's mathematical, then they could be any kind of size that you want and there'd be no difference in file size. But like I say, you may be restricted or limited by your hosting provider as to whether you could upload SVG images. Now, if you can upload SVG images, you also need to make sure that Elementor is set to allow you to use them. Let me just quickly show you how you do that. Let's exit to the dashboard. And from there, we're going to come into Elementor and Settings. Underneath there, we've got Advanced as an option. And you can see it says Enable Unfiltered Files Uploads. So as long as you're using the most up-to-date version of Elementor on Elementor Pro, this will be the option. If you use an older version, it will basically say Allow SVG Uploads. This is before we had JSON being included as part of these 
unfiltered uploads. So if you enable that and your server and host allows it, you should then be able to do the same kind of thing, but just using SVG images instead of PNG, like I've just shown you in this example. So this is just the tip of the design iceberg when it comes to applying masks or CSS clip paths to your images. And if you'd like to learn more, just let me know in the comments section. And if enough people are interested, I'll take a look at creating some more tutorials on this type of topic. Now, as always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered are in that description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.